Hey, good morning once again. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Hey, good morning, Karen, Arila, Riku. Thanks for joining in. You on the fan? It's gonna, yeah. Sorry, guys. Maybe you can put that fan on over there, and uh, and I mean, for them, if you want it, you can turn on that one. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's recording. Yes. Hi, Surya. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm audible, right? For those online, um, are you able to hear me? Okay, clearly. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Hey, why is everyone so serious? <laughs> Great, okay. All right, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Yep. Father, we submit this time into your hands, um, this hour into your hands, Lord. Even as we once again meditate from your word, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open our eyes to the wonderful things of your word. And you are the word, Jesus. I pray that there would be a new and a fresh revelation of who you are, God, today. Come, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. You lead us, you speak to us. Let the word of God pierce our hearts like a double-edged sword because we honor you in this place, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay. All right. Uh, once again, I hope you all are doing well. Um, it's been quite a journey um, in this course. At least we've covered five chapters, praise and worship, from chapter one to chapter five. We finished chapter five last class. And uh, I hope that you've been learning something. And I hope uh, it's uh, been teaching you to, you know, I don't know, make your lifestyle as a worshiper better um has it helped anyone so far there's just five more chapters to go it's a short course so has this, this course helped anyone so far yes no maybe yeah, a little bit <laughs> awesome thank you great i'm glad um so we move into chapter six now uh, becoming a worshiper becoming a worshiper Okay. Uh, we begin this chapter by understanding the difference between uh, spiritual worship and fleshly worship. Okay. Um, so, uh, out of memory, uh, who can? Uh, what 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 is one of the things that uh, John chapter four was twenty two to twenty four says? What does it say? John chapter four. Verse 22 to 24, what does it say? Okay, God is seeking for true worshippers. Who will worship him in? Spirit and truth, truth and spirit, whatnot, right? So, God is seeking. Seeking is what? Searching. He's looking to and fro. True worshippers. If there is true worshippers, that means there is false worship. Yes. So if there is true worship, there is false worship, and if there is, uh, and then goes on to say that he is looking for worship, uh, true worshippers who will worship him in spirit and truth. Okay. So spirit, spiritual uh, worship. The opposite of spiritual worship is fleshly worship. It's non-spiritual. <laughs> that simply means a fleshly worship. Okay, um, God is spirit. Yeah, thanks, Nina. Yeah. So those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay, everybody say that. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay. So understanding, if you have to understand, uh, you know, either true worship, you need to understand what is false worship. And if you understand what is false worship, you will understand what is true worship, right? It's like uh, um, these government officials who are trained to uh, find out these counterfeit notes, you know, this fake currency. They don't sit and study all the thousands of fake currencies that's there. What they do is they, they study the original really well, right? They study the original note, 100 rupee note, whichever, 2,000 rupees note, I guess. They study it really well. 
and then they are able to find out what the false worship. Uh, I mean, worship, I mean, the false currency is all about, right? So, um, so this is my opinion. Is it's very important for us to understand spiritual worship, and it will open up our minds uh, about everything what fleshly worship is about. Okay, so let's start off with. Can someone help me read First Peter chapter two, verse five? First Peter chapter two, verse five, and. Uh, Thank you. So, First Peter chapter two was um, five. Uh, yeah, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Okay. So, tell me some of the things. Uh, is everybody there? First Peter chapter two was five. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me read it one more time very slowly, fo follow along. Um, you can read it in your own language as well. So it says, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So what are some of the things that stand out in that verse to you? What are some of the things, uh, the key words that is like sticking out to you? Acceptable. Okay. So, it ha okay. So accept it has to be acceptable to God. That's one of the things. What else is standing out to you? Holy priesthood, okay. Holy priesthood, okay. What else? Spiritual house, spiritual sacrifices, living stones, okay. You understood my question, Vimal? You understood my question. What are some of the key things that are standing out in that verse? Like they mentioned, okay, so spiritual house, spiritual sacrifice. Um, we are being built up as spiritual sacrifices. Yeah, okay. Um, acceptable to God. Okay, well, I'm looking for one more key thing. Through Jesus Christ. Okay, there we go. Through Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, but that's very important, isn't it? Through Jesus Christ. Um, so in, in a lot of places in the scriptures, in another translation, uh, instead of the word through, it will um, the word uh, in accordance, according will be used, right? According to Jesus Christ, in accordance with Jesus Christ, right? Um, it simply means accord. Uh, in the middle of that word, according, everybody say according. Okay, it's like saying uh, according to him, her, she is like this. According to her. You know, we use that word, right? According to me, it's it looks a little dark in here today. You know, so the middle of the word <laughs> according, yeah, it's kind of blocked there. <laughs> so, um, in the middle of the word accord is what the word chord is there. We all play a chord. Some of us play a chord, right? Like like three notes. It sounds together in, in harmony, right? And so in harmony with Jesus Christ, in other words, in one accord with Jesus Christ, we are being transformed into a spiritual house. Uh, so we are into a holy priesthood. Who will bring spiritual sacrifices, right? Um, uh, someone read uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, please. Thank you. Right? So, the previous verse, First Peter chapter two, verse five, Peter ends that verse by saying, "Through Jesus Christ." Here, the Hebrew writer he starts with Jesus Christ. And it says, "Therefore," okay. Anytime I always say this, right? If you see the word "therefore," you need to ask, "Why is it therefore?" 
Okay, so you see, so you have to go back and read the previous verses. But anyways, so therefore, by him, who is the him? Sure, pakka, we lock it. Okay, <laughs> uh, therefore, by him or through him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. Stop. If we try to offer worship without Jesus, if it's not going through him, if it's not in accordance or in line with what he has done on the cross for us, um, there's no spiritual worship. Are you with me? There is no spiritual worship, but through Jesus Christ, it is through his blood, we enter the throne of grace, right? Um, so that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Um, okay. Um, someone very quickly, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, a very famous, popular um, scripture, right? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Thank you. Once again, this verse begins with therefore. <laughs> therefore, by the mercies of God. Is that right? Uh, I urge you, brethren. I be, another translation says, I beseech you. Uh, so beseech is uh, simply another word for, it's, it's a very polite word to say beg. OK, so I beg you. So who wrote the book of Romans? So he's Paul, okay. Um, he was known as the Pharisees of the Pharisees, Apostle Paul. Like that means uh, some of the scholars say that the education of Paul or his wisdom and knowledge of Paul is equivalent of having 20 PhDs. Um, <laughs> yeah. 20 PhDs in here, we are trying to finish a degree. <laughs> right? Uh, Paul was highly educated. Like uh, He was trained by the most finest Pharisee, the teacher of the law, the Apostle Paul. And he is coming and saying, I beg you. Right? He's saying, I'm begging you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, right? Again, remember from First Peter chapter 2, it has to be acceptable to God, right? Our worship, guys, our worship must be acceptable to God. If your worship is not being acceptable, useless. Throw it. Don't do anything. Just pack it and keep it. Right? Um, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, it goes on to say, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed. Um, what is it saying? It's like, okay, don't let the world influence you. Just because the world is doing that, you don't think, okay, I'm going to go. Okay, that chalta hai attitude, I'm using it correctly. Nikhil, what is chalta? It's just like, ah, it's okay. It's okay. Just one puff. It's okay. Just one shot. It's just one bad word. It's just one nude scene in that movie. But the movie story is nice. You get what I'm saying? Don't let the world influence how you live your life. Are you with me? That's the beginning of understanding spiritual worship. Is you not letting the world influence you. Then Paul goes on to say what? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. Um, another recurring thing in the three verses that we've read so far is sacrifice. We read spiritual sacrifice in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. 
right? We, here we are seeing living sacrifice. Um, has anybody witnessed uh, a sacrifice happening, like the sacrifice being offered? Has anybody seen? You've seen what sacrifice? Head of the goat. The goat is still alive, no? When they do it. Yeah, okay, but the head is separated. That's what they go for, no? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so sacrifice, offer yourself. He's saying offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Now, for them to offer a sacrifice, there was an altar, right? They have to build an altar on which the, the offering will be placed isn't it um th there's a beautiful study on abraham uh, we, we learn about that in the third year but uh abraham is known as the man of altars he built altars everywhere god took him right uh, altar is a sign of surrender it's a sign of sacrifice again right he kept building altars here paul he's saying don't just be build altars you have to be on the altar. Okay. Paul is saying, don't just build the altar by her. Now it's time for you to get on the altar. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Welcome, Sean. Right. A sacrifice eventually dies, isn't it? Paul is asking us, put your flesh to death. Put your flesh to death every day. Right? If you don't put your flesh to death, you can't say, I'm a true worshiper. You can't offer spiritual worship. Because God is spirit, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. You guys are still alive, right? Yes? Okay, uh, last verse. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. Um, it says, For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay, we, who worship God in the spirit, rejoice. Once again, rejoice in Paul. Right. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in flesh. Have no confidence simply means like don't rely on the flesh. I guess I hope you all are understanding the seriousness of it. Um, the the seriousness of fleshly worship. We haven't even touched that subject yet, but just studying about spiritual worship should bring make us aware about the seriousness of the false worship already. Okay. Um, and the core of it all is, uh, is your worship uh, going through Jesus Christ? And that's the point of it all, okay? Yeah, everybody okay so far? Uh, now let's look at uh, fleshly worship. We've kind of briefly understood spiritual worship. Uh, we've all been transformed, being built into a holy priesthood. You know, one of the things what priests did, the priests in the book, in the Old Testament, um, they never went before God empty-handed. Right? They never went before God empty-handed. Um, and that kind of sheds, when we look at the New Covenant, the New Testament, right? And we look at the life of Jesus. Why are all these verses, and there are more verses, by the way, and just four verses mentioned in your notes, but there are so many verses that says, through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, in accordance with him. Why? Jesus was not only our offering. He was also the offerer. We read that in the book of Hebrews, right? He was not only our sacrifice. He was also our high priest. He is also our high priest. We need to understand that, okay? Jesus is not only our offering or our sacrifice that died on the cross. He is also the offerer. 
right? He's not only our sacrifice, but he is also our high priest, right? So that is the significance of us understanding um, the beauty of Jesus. Okay, so now very quickly, let's look at uh, fleshly worship. Um, we'll leave the scriptures mentioned in the notes for a second, but let's look at, uh, can someone read for me Isaiah chapter 5, verse 12? Isaiah chapter 5, verse 12. Can you read it one more time, please? The heart of the saints is empty and blue, mm -hmm. and why are you their place? But they do not regard the work of the Lord, nor consider the operation of his hand. Right. But they do not regard the work of the Lord nor consider the operation of his hands. Right? Uh, is there another translation? I think that's NKJV, isn't it, Vimal? Yeah, yeah, please. But they do not? What the Lord is doing. Okay, that's present continuous. Okay. Yeah, any other translation? Which one was that, Sean? News, okay. Uh, NIV, okay. Which one is that? Which verse is that? Oh, no, no. So I was asking to read uh, Isaiah 5, verse 12 once again. Yeah. Isaiah 5, verse 12, yeah. No respect for the work of his hands. Okay, so there can be music happening all around, same instruments that we use and whatnot, but still have absolutely no respect for who God is. It's a sailor moment. You know, it's a sailor moment. It's like this pause. Mm -hmm. It's a thinking moment right there. In everything that we we are doing, in, in our singing, in our playing, uh, whatnot, um, a question for us again, um, okay, is am I honoring him? Am I giving him all the respect, all the honor that is due his name, right? Another classic scripture. Um, let's go to Amos chapter 5. Is in the book that is in the Bible, just in case you're wondering. Uh, Amos chapter 5, yes. We will go to, uh, let's go to, we'll read from verse 22. We'll read from verse 22 and stop at verse 23. Stop. Though you offer me burnt offering and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. Okay, what are some of the things that we kept reading in the previous the spiritual uh, worship passages? Is acceptable? A worship must be acceptable, right? If the one who we are worshiping is not accepting your worship, what is the point of it? Right, and here God is like, okay, although you're offering, you know, offerings are their sign of their way of saying their way of worshiping, isn't it? I will not accept them. Go ahead, continue, continue. No, hmm. Thanks. Uh, there's another scripture which uh, okay. No, 
That's fine. Uh, there's one interesting uh, line there from verse 23. It says, take away from me those, uh, from the noise of your songs, okay? For I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. There's another word there. It's like saying, uh, but actually, I just want to read the whole thing, okay? Um, the rest of the thing. Verse 24, it says, But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Okay, like mighty stream. Uh, did you offer me, oh, we read that. Um, verse 26, it says, You also carried Sikuth, your king, and Shion, your idols, the star of your gods. Which made, which you made for yourselves. Okay, um, this is like the beginning of uh, the fleshly worship, right? Um, the downfall of Israel in the in the Old Testament, time and time again, that you will read is uh, they went back into idolatry, right? Time and time again, they went back into idolatry. Okay, so if you read the book, uh, say Judges. And if you haven't read the book of Judges, I would encourage you to read it. Uh, one of the scary chapters in the Bible uh, is, in, for me at least, <laughs> Judges chapter 19. Uh, but uh, if you read the book of Judges, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, um, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, what is 1 Kings, 2 Kings, everything. There's one cycle, there's one pattern to Israelites' uh, life, how they lived. Right? They would do idol worship, followed by punishment, followed by repentance and forgiveness. God will forgive them, and they go back into idol worship. A nice cycle, circle. Okay, in time, yeah, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah the sin gets just, you know, more creative ways of sinning, I guess. <laughs> right? Um, and you see that from the beginning, God takes Abraham, right? He takes Abraham from this land of Ur. He was part of what we call it as a polytheism. Say, polytheism is multiple gods. You have many gods. Poly, polytheism, right? And he says, okay, I'm going to take you from here. And now I'm making you a monotheist. Mono means one, right? One god. So overnight, it's like, uh, like I mean, how do I explain? The God taking a Chinese person and say, okay, you're an Indian now. Just like that. Only God can do that, something like that, right? Uh, overnight. So God takes him and says, okay, and then even in the commandments, you will not have any other gods before me. Are you with me? Right? Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. I'll just read it for us. Exodus 23 to 5. You can turn if you want to. Exodus. Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. It says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or, or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Right? It starts off by saying, you shall have no other gods before me. He's a jealous God. He's an all-consuming fire. Uh, do you remember when we read Psalm 115? Verse 4 to 8. Okay, let's refresh our memory. Psalm 115, verse 4 to 8. Can... Thank you. Right? Those who make them, verse 8, will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Okay, That's like the key verse for us to understanding idol worship, uh, idolatry. So God absolutely hates idolatry. Um, how many of you know what adultery is? What is adultery? 
what is adultery sorry oh is, this is not just seeing bro this is adultery okay so um, adultery is say uh, a married man right a uh, married couple whatever if either one of them is cheats on the other person by like having sexual relations outside of the marriage with another person that is what adultery is okay are you with me so idolatry is spiritual adultery okay idolatry is spiritual adultery it's and god takes this very why does he hate idolatry it's like god is saying i'm a jealous god why jealous god for whom am i jealous for i'm jealous for you you are mine i am yours i purchased you with my blood right you are mine i am not willing to share you with the world and then we go and say it's like you know i don't want you i want everything else right um let's one, one, one uh, let's read more scriptures uh, i hope that's okay let's go to second kings chapter 17 verse 14 to 20 second kings is after first kings second kings chapter 17 verse 14 to 20 okay it says uh, i hope you're there should i repeat second kings chapter 17 verse 14 to 20 it says but they would not listen and were as stiff necked as their ancestors who did not trust in the lord their god they rejected his decrees and the covenant he made with their ancestors and the sit and the statues he had won them to keep they followed worthless idols i don't know what language uh, i mean what words are used but you should you ought to highlight it they followed worthless like useless like you know absolute no worth remember the word worship comes from the word latin word worth ship right they were giving worship to something that is absolutely worthless okay uh, and themselves became worthless so look at that line they followed worthless idols and they themselves became worthless psalm 115 verse 8 says they be you become like the one you worship they became like the idols that they worship right uh, verse 16 they forsook all the commands of the lord their god and made for themselves two idols cast in the shape of calves and asherah pole they bowed down to all their starry host and they worshiped baal they sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire they practiced divination and sought omens and sold themselves to the evil they sold themselves to do evil in the eyes of the lord arousing his anger so the lord was very angry with israel and removed them from his presence only the tribe of judah was left only the tribe of judah was left and even judah did not keep the commands of the lord their god they followed the practices israel had introduced therefore the lord rejected all the people of israel he afflicted them and gave them into the hands of plunders until he thrust them from his presence this is very serious guys this is very very serious before i talk about the consequences of idolatry there's one more passage of scriptures that i want to read uh, and i hope that's all right with everyone <laughs> those online uh, let's go to numbers chapter 24 uh, numbers chapter 25 sorry you guys are alive now you're learning something? You're learning something? Nice pants, Nickel. I told that already, right? <laughs> uh, Numbers chapter 25. Okay. How many of you like the book of Numbers? 
hey, you know you, you you know you can ask this question say hey which is your favorite book now no christian would say numbers is my favorite book <laughs> right um but this is an absolute this chapter not chapter 25 uh, i'm not going to go into the details of it but it's the turning point in the history of israel okay we're not going to study this whole thing but this chapter numbers chapter 25 what happens before and after is very very crucial to understanding the history of israel okay but we're not going to get into this so numbers chapter 25 verse 1 onwards while israel was staying in shittim the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with moabite women okay pause before when god brings them out of exodus god says you guys better be careful i know i'm bringing you out of egypt into the land i promised your fathers but they are they are, they are worshiping idols they have different practices their culture is different everything about them is very different god says very clearly don't indulge in any of their practices right don't indulge in any of their practices what do israelites do that is exactly what they do it's like telling a kid don't do that i will go do that don't put your finger in that elect you know that electricity hole it's like i will go let me see what happens <laughs> have you seen that it's like you know um but that's exactly what happened yes yeah, It's, it's in our nature, you know, it's like rebelliousness. <laughs> uh, but that exactly is what's happening here. God told them not to do it, but this is exactly what they are doing, okay? Um, so, verse 1 again, when men were there, they began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women. Now, how did they end up over there, okay? V verse 2, this is very important. Before they indulged in sexual immorality, look at that who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods right who invited them to sacrifices to their gods what, what's the first thing it's like come let's worship our gods it begins there right false worship i mean every every immorality the consequences of idolatry guys remember the consequences of fleshly worship in other words idolatry it leads to immorality okay idolatry leads to immorality so that's exactly what would happen these men came you know with the honey in their lips and nice makeup and there's some spray or whatnot it's like come let's worship our gods it begin with small false worship before they knew they were indulging in sexual immorality right uh, the people ate and they bowed down before these gods so israel Wow. The Israel joined in worshipping the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go into the details of this entire chapter, but God was very, very angry. Okay? God was very, very angry. Uh, let's, um, let's look at... Actually, I'm going to read this uh, quite a bit. Is that okay, guys? Because I feel this is very crucial, okay? So the Lord said to Moses, verse 4, Take all the leaders of these people, <laughs> kill them, and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel, Judges, each of you put to death those of your men who have joined in worshipping the Baal of Peor. God just doesn't tolerate sin or idolatry. Um, verse 6, this is crucial, okay? Verse 6, Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. What is happening? Everybody is wailing. Is like, they're, you know, they're like, Moses, their leader is there. 
and this man in broad daylight is bringing a median woman into the camp for what to commit sexual immorality right in the, there is a time where it comes where sin will not hide in the night sin is no longer secret it's wide open in the front of the leaders but then verse 7 when phinehas son of eleazar the son of aaron the priest saw this he left the assembly took a spear in his hand and followed the israelite to into the tent he drove the spear through both of them he drove the spear you know what a spear is gadabar types he drove a spear through both of them through the israelite and into the woman's body then the plague against the israelites was stopped but those who died in the plague numbered 24000 verse 10 the lord said to moses phinehas son of eleazar son of aaron the priest has turned my anger away from the israelites for he was zealous as i am for my honor amongst them so that in my zeal i did not put an end to them verse 12 therefore tell him i am making my covenant of peace with him verse 13 he and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his god and made atonement for the israelites the name of israel who was killed with the midianite woman was zemri and salu the leader of the simeonite family and the name of the midianite woman was put to death was 16 the lord said to moses treat the midianites as enemies and kill them because they treated you as enemies pause so god is stopping while there is sin that is happening all around us right that's what the, the world that we are living in is is crazy where the sin is like it, it's no longer secret it's like everything is cool one night stand is cool sexual immorality is cool right using filthy language is cool while all of this is happening just like we read well sin is happening all around us god is saying is there a phinehas can i see is will will will, will a phinehas rise for me who's zealous for my name and i'm sure that's exactly how he's looking at y'all is okay as my worshipers are you zealous for my honor as i am for my honor but check out the result of phinehas's uh, action is god just doesn't bless him god comes and say i'm going to make my covenant not just to him but his entire generation right that is the beauty of when you say i'm not going to do idol you know i'm not going to do any idol worship but then choose god this is how he blesses us now you might i all ask is like hey roshan but i don't i don't bow down to an idol or a statue i don't worship how is this applicable to me our modern day idolatry can look like money a modern day idolatry can look like career what else a modern day idolatry can be like uh anything that we want whatever like sports whatever shon yeah yeah you yeah. may love someone more than god self you know this uh, i studied in uh, about idolatry in 2017 uh not because i wanted to <laughs> it's because god gave a nice little nudge on you know tap on my shoulder so i think it was 2017 um i spent out of the 12 months in 2017 a solid 9 months i was only thinking about one guitar hey i'm a musician you know musicians will have their dream guitars i mean like gadgets like others who don't like instruments you know 
out of 12 months i'm i'm not i'm just i'm not proud about that but i'm just sharing this because god in it, he was graceful and he was merciful to me right so for 9 months of the 12 months in that year i researched everything about that guitar i studied a lot about acoustic i learned a lot that's another thing right about uh, how the guitar is designed, the engineering of the guitar, um, the wood, everything about different species of wood, which wood is best combination for to make a guitar. I learned all of that, but 24-7, week after week after week, everybody around me would know I'm talking about that guitar. My wife was fed up. <laughs> right? uh, and then what did the, what, what was I doing? I just made that guitar my idol, my affection, my devotion, my time, my energy, my thinking, everything was only about that guitar. But eventually, someday I might get that guitar, but that's a different story. <laughs> right? But then he just reminded me and said, you've just built an idol for yourself, Roshan. So I want to bring this class to an end and ask this question to you all. Have you built an idol for yourself? Only you can recognize the idol that you have built. Right? Only you can recognize the idol that you have built for yourself. It can be something or someone. Are you with me? That is fleshly worship. And to say that God hates it is an understatement. To say that God does not like idolatry or fleshly worship is, is nothing. He absolutely cannot stand it. And with that same mouth, when you come and say, I worship you, your worship will not be acceptable, isn't it? You can play all the songs, the best instrument, the best equipments you have. Yes, Vima. Sorry? Yeah. 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 Are you asking if he if he did witchcraft? No, that I I don't think that was witchcraft. It was like strategically placed intentionally so that he can keep Benjamin back in Egypt, so that he can bring Jacob, his father, to Israel. I mean, to Egypt. So it's not witchcraft. Yeah, it's it. I mean, it was an important come for the Egyptians, but I don't. He didn't do any practice on it or whatnot. So it was. He just puts it in the sack, so that he can keep Benjamin back, saying that he stole it. We'll talk about that now. Okay, um, I, I don't want to go too much into this, but there's a lot more content on this, but we'll stop here. But uh, uh, I hope you answer that question to yourself, as in, uh, have you built an idol for yourself? Um, because only you can recognize your idols. And uh, yeah, cool. So we'll take a break now. We'll pause the recording and we'll come back to the second session and resume from where we left. All right, guys, see you all in 10 minutes.